Model Making Guru is sponsored by eModels.co.uk, your one-stop shop for all your model making needs. eModels.co.uk, make something awesome. Hey everyone, it's Fox from Model Making Guru here. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to part one. Part 1.5. I, I did the live stream yesterday, so this is kind of part 1.5. Part 1.5, let's say, of our build of the Games Workshop Space Wolves Stormfang gunship. But we're actually doing it as a Storm Wolf, not a Stormfang. But it's the same thing. So, hello, yes, welcome. I have been itching to do this for ages and as the mega size unicorn is uh, having a gunk wash drying time for the next few days i thought i'd get this done and out of the way so uh, i got it out from the shelf and i spent yesterday building it up uh, if you missed it i did do a live stream yesterday uh, it was about three hours long just putting together some bits and having a chat with the community so that's on the playlist if you're watching this go and look up the playlist it's the one before this uh, if you've not used my youtube channel before if you go to my homepage, my youtube homepage look up to playlists I always put my stuff in playlists I'm very very user-friendly like that yes so playlists anyway right so what are we doing well we're making this this is what we're planning on making uh, it is the storm what fang storm fang uh, but you get two variants you can have the storm fang or the storm wolf I'm making the storm wolf the only major difference is on the front of it on the storm fang it's got a, a bonnety thing rather than the big cannon in the front there so you can see here i've got all the bits sort of pre-made i did lots of building yesterday like i said so everything's kind of pre-made into sub assemblies now so what have we got well we've got the major sub assemblies done so we have all the lower hull and the sides and back that's all done and that's given me a problem that i'll tell you about in a minute uh, that has all been done and i did not follow the uh, building instructions for that and i'll explain that to you shortly that's all been done we've got the upper hull done uh, that's all been sorted out the cockpit's not glued in yet uh, and i'll explain that and then we have the bits and the bob so we have the top half of the pilot dude the space puppy himself uh, we have the um i've already put the twin last can twin linked last cannons on the top here they're awesome uh, on the side you've got lots of options of weapons so for the side here i decided to go for wait for it hang on wait 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 hang on wait I went for the uh, twin linked heavy bolters there you go twin linked heavy bolters that i then stuck on upside down <laughs> yeah they're upside down never mind never mind so we've got twin linked heavy bolters on the side uh, sponsons i love that word sponsons uh, we have on the roof because it's the space wolf on the back here we're not going to have like a big cowl and we're going to have a big fat gun and that will be the wait for it hang on wait wait accessing accessing I don't know my Warhammer law. Accessing. Accessing. Where are you? Come on. Ooh. Hang on. Error. Twin linked Hellfrost cannon. There you go. I love that phrase twin linked. It's great. It just means the two of them and the I assume it means the two and the linked. They move like that. It's great. So we've got the Hellfrost cannon on the top here the uh, heavy bolters on the sponsons and the last cannons on the front there i that will mean something to everybody in the world who plays warhammer now what are we going to do with this i've also got some bits and bobs that are going to go on the outside now i explained in my live stream yesterday painting warhammer is a difficult thing because i always sell my build so when this is finished it's going to go up for sale the problem i've got is if i do some wacky out there paint scheme that's just made up out of my head and there's all star wars or something like that nobody's gonna buy it because it won't fit in with their army so i'm gonna have to paint it official colors if i actually want to sell it i mean there might be some people that buy it just because it's a nice model but there's a lot more people that buy it because they want to put it in their army so i'm gonna have to stick to the official color schemes official color schemes i have done my research as to all the unit markings for the different units and sort of things of the space wolves and it's all really confusing so i might make that up a little bit i might just do some bits and bobs i don't know i'll just i'll just wing it 
I'll just wing it to a certain degree. So, you know, the, the decal markings might not specifically be correct, but hey, if, you, if, you, if you're looking at buying this when it's done and you've got an army of space wolves, it'll still look cool. Just, just put it in your army and you'll win every game and it'll be brilliant. I looked up the difference between the space, the storm, uh, and it says storm hawk then, storm wolf and the storm fang, and all the points values are exactly the same for both units, so it doesn't matter which one I built. So I went for the storm wolf because I quite like this note, and I've got to tell you, I've had this kit in my stash for like about eight months, and I've been building it all day yesterday, and it's only about half an hour ago that I realised it's kind of like a puppy head, because you've got the nose, the mouth, it's the back of the head it's like a puppy so it's a space i can't believe i've been looking at it all this time and i've never actually figured out that's like a puppy's nose and the, yeah so there you go so that's quite cool uh, it's got an opening door on the front which is rather funky um, i was just going to build it all and then paint it but then i realized hang on there's an interior there oh and the door opens oh people can put dudes in the, oh so i've had to cobble this together so let me go and uh, put this to one side i'll explain the sub-assemblies that I've done and why I veered from the actual building order and how I plan to paint it and then we'll crack on. So let me get all this tidied up back in a moment. Okay so before we get going I need to explain my build order. Um, if you're following along with this, if you're building the same thing and you're following along with what I'm doing, I'm going to tell you how I built the lower hull and the order I've done it all in because I've changed, I've diverted from the instructions, I've done things a different way. What I realised very quickly was when you've got the cockpit in here and it's installed into the hull. There ain't no way on God's good earth I'm ever getting a brush in there to paint all the tiny details and make sure I get everything covered in nice coats of paint and get down to his lower legs and feet for the pilot. It's, just, it's not going to happen. It's not happening at all. And that would be just a pain in the bum. So I thought, right, I'll make it easier. I'll get the cockpit painted first. Then I'll install it into the hull. Then we'll stick that on. So I thought, right, so I'll build all this bit first and I'll, I'll, that's how we'll do it. However, that's not how you're supposed to build it. Here is the official Games Workshop certified build order, order of business, that they do decree you should henceforth and forsooth and notwithstanding do it in, basically. Now, what they say is you take the top part that you've all built everything up, you've got the cockpit installed, pilot in there, stick the side wall on, then you stick on the, the floor, and then you apply the back parts, da -da -da stick in the the dividing wall in the middle here that's this bit here that you can't see that bit uh, and then put on the other side wall and then it's just exterior details i didn't do it that way because if you do it that way you've already glued the top on you, so I, I can't do that so what i had to do was i took the side wall and the floor i got some masking tape and i put that bit like that across the, the floor and the side wall just so i can hold them in place loosely and then took my Tamiya Extra Thin, which is my glue of choice, and I ran it with pointy stick. Where's the pointy stick? I ran it along the, in the edge here between the two pieces and on the outside as well, just to try and fill in the gap a little bit and just to make it stick nicely. So that was glued in. Give it a few seconds, just held it in place. Then I glued in this rear wall and the top piece here, the divider, and I inserted this this uh, this door on the front, which is just two pegs that go into two holes. So I inserted that. This was glued, and then I took this side wall, glued it here, and held it in place. And while I was holding it like that in place, I ran some glue down there, and ran some glue down there, and then just held it for a few seconds, and that got it in place. Then, then I came along and added these back walls. Now here's a handy tip: if you look at this back wall, it doesn't fit flush with the sides it's not supposed to i didn't know that so what you need to do is when you put that back wall as soon as you've put the back wall on and got glue on there just loosely put this top panel on and if you've got a gap push this back wall up to meet it it's supposed to sit slightly above because there's a, a recess in the back on the, the back of the top so it's supposed to stick up a little tiny bit so get ugh, fail get this back wall on first put this piece in and while the glue is still setting get this this top on everything's falling apart get this top on and just push it and adjust it so it sticks up and that way you'll have no gap uh, and then i stuck the wings on and these two wings here i have to say games workshop you guys are geniuses i've never come across a model kit where you can take a wing get some glue and just go and the wings on there's no fiddling there's no fussing it fits perfectly there's no adjustment to do it's not going to be out of whack and at the wrong angle it just locks in place done 
Games Workshop, thank you so much for that. It's one of the reasons I hate aircraft, because you're trying to get the wings on. Perfect. There's no hassle at all. Um, I did... There is one boo-boo, or some challenges I'm going to have with this. Obviously, the, the cockpit is separate, so I can paint that. This wall is going to be a bit of a pig to get to, but not impossible. So that's not the end of the world, but it's going to be a pain. Because I'm doing the Storm Wolf, this door opens, you can see right down. If you're doing the Storm Fang, this is a solid panel that doesn't open, so you can ignore the interior completely. You don't have to worry about it. Uh, but because I'm doing the Storm Wolf, I have to take account of the fact I've got paint in here. So I've got to get there. Now the big problem I've made for myself, yeah, Duncan doesn't mention this when he does his on his, on his Warhammer TV. This piece here, this cowling around the engines, the intakes, it's supposed to be like yellow or red with some triangle patterns on it. How am I going to get my brush down there? I can probably paint the red or the yellow, but painting triangles down there, yeah, that's not going to happen. If you're making this, don't glue these engines. I've glued them on. I'm, I'm, I'm screwed. These are glued on now. They're not coming off ever. So I'm going to have to have colour going down, but maybe not all the triangles. Uh, when Duncan does it, he shows you how to paint the triangles and his engines are attached. But he doesn't actually mention anything about down here and he doesn't actually show you that bit. It's quite clever. So, yeah. So I, I've made that rod for my back there. I can't get down there to paint little triangles. I'll do what I can. So it may just be coloured down there. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. But other than that, went together like a dream. Now, in terms of seam lines, you have pretty much almost none. The only seam lines I've had to work on are the seam lines on the top and bottom of the engine cowlings here. And seam lines on this bit that the twin linked hell frost cannon or whatever it's called goes on. There's a seam line down there. And there were some seam lines on the actual Hellfrost cannon, whatever it's called, as well. Just going down there. Dead easy. This plastic is so soft, you can just run your glue along it, give it a second, sand it, and it's fine. With these, I just put some sprue goo on there. Uh, if you're not sure what sprue goo is, go into my, go into my uh, playlist. I'll put a link up here, but I don't know what time it'll pop up. But there is a, a how to use sprue goo in my, in my playlists. So that's that. So this is the play of order. What we need to do is, I need to prime the cockpit, prime the top half of the pilot, and prime the inner bay here where the dudes will go. Just get this all primed up. I'm not going to prime the outside yet. Don't care about this bit, you're not going to see it. Uh, get the cockpit fully painted. Oops. Then I'll drop it. We'll get the cockpit installed in here. I'll prime in here as well and paint in here to match the cockpit. Uh, we will get the cockpit installed. And then we'll attach the top half of the pilot. If you do it the other way, you probably won't get the cockpit in. You won't fit. So you've got to attach the pilot once the cockpit is installed. So just keep that in mind. Yeah, if I can get the cockpit out again. Once that's all installed, we'll obviously get all in here painted up as well. Once that's done, we'll attach the top bit here. Now, this is why I am not priming the outside just yet. Uh, when I come to put this together, I'm going to need to run glue along these edges and squish and get it all to lock in place. If this was primed or painted, you'd get stuff glooping out. It wouldn't stick very well because you'd have primer glue trying to stick to primer. That's not going to work. So I need to keep that plastic bare. So I'm not going to touch the outside yet, apart from this bit here. So that'll go on. Then we'll get the whole thing primed uh, and then we'll get the whole thing painted. We'll do all the base colours first, get that done, do some weathering and chipping. Uh, and then we're going to paint all the metallics and all the gold details and the extra bits. And then we've got all the things we're going to stick on it, all the dangly bits. Uh, and I'm not sure how I'm going to stick those on yet. I might use um, either canopy glue or I might use PVA glue. I don't want to use super glue. A lot of people just super glue these things onto painted models. Every time I've put super glue onto a painted model, it's gone foggy and frosty. So I'm not going to do that. So first thing we need to do is prime the cockpit, the pilot inside there and inside here. So I'm, I'm going to get it ready. I was going to use the good old fashioned Chaos Black, uh, but that will go everywhere anyway, and it's not really controllable. I don't want to prime the outside. And it's also a million degrees below and mingingly wet outside, so I can't do that. So instead, I'm going to use my good old standby, uh, my ultimate UMP primer, Black. Uh, and I'm just going to put that on with my airbrush. So let me go and get everything ready, and we will do that.
Okay, so the primer's all dried, and as you can see, it's nice and dark in there. Uh, you notice I had some tape across the front, the door thing here. That was just so I, it wasn't flopping open all the time, because I only want to spray the inside this colour. The outside's going to be the normal colour. So when I come to do the next coat, I'll put more tape on there. Uh, that's gone on there. I realised I have to do this bit as well, because when you open this door at the front, you don't want to see bare plastic. So I went back and reprimed this, or primed this bit as well as the inside of the cockpit. That's all done there. I also had some other parts that I was priming. Uh, these are just parts that are going to go on the outside, but I realised I may as well get them primed now. I'm not going to prime the rest of the outside, because I need to glue the upper hull on. Uh, but these bits I can go ahead and do. So you've got the cowling that goes over the canopy, uh, the, the bit that goes on top of the big gun on the roof, uh, the bolters that go on the side, the sponsons, they've been primed, uh, and the two cannons that go on the roof. And then I also primed all the little detail parts, the little bits of chain and wolf tail and sort of things that go on the side. I may as well get them primed now. I've not primed the bit that goes under the big gun, because what I'm going to do when I come to do the outside, I want this to be able to rotate. Is that the right way around? Yeah. I want this to be able to rotate, which is what it's supposed to be able to do it on camera, dear. This needs to be able to rotate, apparently, or it seems like it should. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm not going to do this in, but also I want to keep this bit unpainted because then you can rotate it. It's not going to take paint off or fit badly. So when I do the outside, I'll just put this in place. It stays there quite nicely. And then when I spray everything, you can take that off and it won't have paint there. So there'll be no fit issues. And if whoever buys this is playing with it, if they want to, they can change the position of that gun. Uh, I did try and keep the bolters uh, movable as well. Uh, so I've hopefully got prime roll on the inside Oops, the, the top and the bottom. So you noticed I was flipping those. Do it on camera again. I'm off camera. Ugh. Ugh, it's late at night. Uh, yes, yeah, so I was moving those around because I wanted to get paint on the top and the bottom. So there you go. So that's those bits done. Next is to actually paint the, the interior colour. Now, I'm going to completely ignore Games Workshop law here. I'm going to do... Um, I'm not going to do the usual sort of uh, iron breaker and lead belcher and stuff like that. I'm not going to do a shiny metallic interior. I'm going to do a traditional aircraft colour interior. Um, many, many aircraft, even recent aircraft, have a light green interior. Uh, and I was reading up about this, and it's basically, it's not painted, it's the colour of the metal when it's got all the anti-rust proofing on it was actually a light green. So it was just unpainted, but it had this light green colour because of all the rust proofing. Now, I don't have any cockpit green with me, uh, but I do have, and it's not a Citadel paint, uh, ammo by MIG, US Armour Personnel Carrier Interior Green, which is kind of about the right colour. It's a little bit light, but we can add lots of weathering to it. So it's a nice light green colour. So we're going to do this on the interior. We're going to do all the inside here, inside of the door. We're going to do the entire cockpit, and we'll do the cockpit part here and inside these bits. And then what I'll do is I'll go in and paint all the panels like with a, 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 a black face plate and then the buttons on top like a real aircraft you've got this kind of an old aircraft you've got green then you've got the black bit for all the stuff with the dials on the fascia with the dials on it i just thought it'd be interesting just let's just do it let's just kind of make it look like a, a proper aircraft interior now for this bit at the back wall here um that i will do with some metallic color because that's equipment and engine and stuff so i'm gonna have to sort of carefully brush paint that somehow what i'll probably do I'm not sure yet, but we'll get it all painted green first. I can go in and paint the metallics after, and then if I need to touch up the green, if I make a bit of a mess, I can do that. It's not a problem. So I'll go and uh, get the airbrush ready. I'm going to airbrush this. I could just brush it, but it's a lot quicker if I just airbrush it. What I'm planning on doing is this bit is airbrushed. Uh, when we do the exterior, the base colours will be airbrushed, but the, the, the pilot and all the details in the cockpit... Uh, and all the other details on the exterior, they'll all be normal brush painting jobs and they'll be using Citadel paints. So I'm going to give this a go. We'll see how this comes out. It might come out a bit too light, but we can always add filters and things on top and we're going to make it look dirty and used inside. So I'll go and get the airbrush ready. Let's crack on.
Okay, so that colour's now on, and it's been done. As you can see, it's this rather pleasing, yet also at the same time slightly minging, avocado grey 1980s bath set colour. It's kind of weird, but it's a kind of nice minty pastel tone. Now, I did something deliberately when I was spraying. I went to town on the cockpit a bit too much, and you can see here how it's very shiny. The paint's very shiny, but when you look at inside the, the crew area, or whatever you call this, the, the interior, that's kind of matte. That's a very particular sort of feature of these ammo paints. They're beautiful colours, uh, they're really nice to work with, but you can't treat them like every other paint when you airbrush them. Uh, you can't just whap the paint on and leave it like that. You can't do a Ted and slap it on. If you put it on really thickly and just do all the paint in one go, you'll get orange peel, it'll go shiny, it'll be too thick, it'll look horrible. You have to build these colours up in thin misty layers so if you're going to use some of the ammo by mig paints they are brilliant paints if you're going to airbrush them just build the color up slowly in misty layers and then you'll get something more like this and not like this i did it deliberately so i could show you that's what happens if you go to town on it it goes a bit glossy and shiny so they're not like tamiya paints or if you're airbrushing citadel paints or anything like that or vallejo paints they're, they're a bit weird like that but they are fantastic so anyway we've got this done and it's this horrible minty not cockpit colored color what we're going to do well we need to darken it a bit make it more you know more space marine -y, more ruggedy and also we want to get something into the recesses to darken there as well so we can do this quite easily we can just use a shade we're going to use a thonian camo shade now this is a kind of dirty green shade and this is going to tint it down and it's going to go into all the recesses there's going to be more stuff after this but this is just the initial step so the first thing is to shake the living crap out of your shades now if you've ever used shades before say especially agrax earth shade and you've put it on your model and you wonder why it comes out shiny and it's not actually a gloss shade it's because you haven't shaken it if you don't shake your shades shake your shade if you don't shake your shade it might come out glossy because there are matting agents in here that keep it not shiny and if you don't mix it all up you might end up just with shade and no matting agent and one other thing as well if you've got something to put it on or attach it to a little bit of tube or something because if you're not th these are really knock overable and i've done it many times so yeah so make sure you attach it to something so you're not going to knock it over so we're going to go ahead i'm using my uh, what size is this my medium shade brush and we're going to apply it all over so it's going to go in I've got my palette here. So I'm going to get some shade on the palette. Now we are applying it everywhere, but I don't want to completely overload it. So I'm going to use a palette just to control how much I've got on there. I sound like Duncan, don't I? Weird. And all we're going to do is go ahead and carefully apply this all over the part. Uh, and I'm just using slow brush movements. Try and use a nice soft brush. I did some tests earlier on. And I used a scratchy old brush. And if you use a scratchy old brush, what you'll find is this may come out really bitty with lots of pigment. So just use a nice soft brush like these shade brushes or your own brushes and just get the shade on there. Now you want it to collect in the recesses, but you don't want it to be all patchy and blotchy on the flat surfaces really. So if you need to move it around if it starts pooling in an area and looking a bit blotchy, just move it around with the brush. Now for the interior of the passenger area, passenger bay or whatever you want to call it, the troop area, troop transport, uh, we're going to do exactly the same. Use the Athonian camo shade. I've got a bigger brush. This is a Dela Graduate 8, size 8, because uh, we're going to use something bigger. Uh, for this area, although the cockpit was a bit dirty, will be a little bit dirty we want this to look even more used so for this we're going to go and put a lot more shade on now what i'm not going to do is put any down here in this sort of engine area because we're going to use different things in there so we're going to put this on here and all around the sides uh, and on this bit here on the the, the the door i don't really know what to call that so we can be a bit more generous here and we're just going to do exactly the same and we're just going to get this in there but for this we're going to be a bit less careful we are going to just kind of, as Ted would do, slap it on. Because this, we do really want it to look dirty and used. So here, and I know it's hard for me to get it on camera while I'm doing it. We're just going to be a lot more generous. Uh, I'm taking it straight from the pot. 
and we're just going to go in there because we're going to do a lot more weathering in here so it's not a problem if there's a few tide marks and things here and there so we'll just go and get all this done okay now that shade is now drying I've done two coats of the green and it does look very patchy and bitty and random but that's fine because you've got lots of weathering to do in here and that's exactly what I'm looking for these brush marks and tide marks they're all going to be blended in later on so don't worry if it looks a bit patchy and rough you're not looking for perfection at this point now you remember I said I wanted to do something different with this engine compartment at the back here which apologies it's hard to film apologies for the last two sections being quite dark as well it's really hard to film inside these bits to get the white balance right so you might it might go from dark to light and my hands may glow like a sun but and white things may explode the exposure but we'll get there and it's really hard to film this bit to actually get some light in there yeah it's not very profesh anyway we want to do something different with this engine section here this looks of mechanical engine section we want it to look oily and, and enginey so we're going to do two shades on here the first one thing we're going to do is some agrax earth shade uh, this is a lovely brown earthy color uh, and this is just to suggest uh, you know engine oil fuel stains things like that so what we're going to do is get our big brush again shake the bottle a lot and we're just going to go in and we're just going to paint this entire and we're going to lock the camera obviously we're going to paint the entire area with the agrax earth shade not massive amounts we don't want it swimming in it but we do want it to collect in all the recesses and tint everything this kind of oily brown shade let's do it that way for this side I hope you can see this there's no easy way for me to to film this that you can actually see and we're just going to do one coat of this just make sure it covers everything again it doesn't matter if it looks patchy that's absolutely fine we want it to look like a well-used engine like something else you'd see on a submarine maybe you can see that something you can see on a submarine perhaps go and look at an old submarine engine Ted's building his big, big submarine. Have a look at that. Okay, and with those shades now dried, I hope you can see that using the Agrax Earth shade here has given you a completely different colour. But this is the same green colour underneath. So this is the kind of magic that shades can work. Now there's a lot more work to do in here. It looks really bad at the minute. If this was like a paint job on a finished model, I'd be like, wow, you need to go back and learn more. But this is just an initial step. Uh, we need to get the next step done. So let's get the cockpit back. We'll do it on that. So here we have a de cockpit and gefarten. It's nice and dark. I did do two coats of the, of the shade, of the green shade. So that's done. You can see the difference between the original minty green color and this now much more militaristic green. Now what we need to do is tidy this up a little bit and bring back some of the edges and the definition. There's lots to do in here, but we're doing it step by step. So here is the device. What we're going to use, we're going to do some dry brushing. So I'm going to get myself my dry brush. I'm going to use my base brush, which is not a dry brush. Fantastic. Oh, we use the base brush anyway. doesn't matter. Uh, and we've got a pot of Skarsnik Green. Do it on camera, dear. Skarsnik green and I'm actually trying to do this the proper way now by resting my elbows on the desk and holding this up it might give us better lighting but you get all this clutter in the background so apologies but we'll see how it goes for some reason whenever I film these citadel builders it's really tricky to film stuff because it's delicate bushwork anyway so we've got some Skarsnik green what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a load on my brush like this you'll see if you've done dry brushing before you know how it works load of the paint neat on the brush I'm going to rub most of it off on a piece of tissue not all of it but quite a lot of it and all we're going to do is go over this to bring back this definition and we're going to work side to side and up and down but we're doing it very lightly and it's just trying to catch the edges and also a little bit build it up on the flatter surfaces now if you just painted this as normal paint you just repaint it and it'd look a bit pants but what you want to do is dry brush because with dry brushing you can get this very subtle shading effect it will catch on edges and that's what we're after so it's just going to highlight these edges and blend away you see that blended away that bit of brown 
it just gives a bit of shading so where there are big splotchy marks as it picks out the edge there where there are big splotchy marks it kind of fades those a little bit so they don't look quite as amateurish and it's always good to go from the edges and in you're not really going to see this bit but it just to give you the idea now with the advantage with this base brush because it's angled like that you can do it this way or you can do it that way I like the angled shape because you can you can pick at the edges okay right the next step is to start some detail painting on the cockpit now I have started painting the actual interior of the bottom hull but unfortunately it's so tight and dark I can't film it so eh, we'll have to do everything on here and then I'll show you the, the inside of that bit later on so let's start putting some details on this the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make some of these panels black if you look inside an aircraft often a lot of the the dials and things and controls are on black panels so we've got two little panels here and on that side uh, and we've got nothing else in here that would look like that on the actual cockpit dashboard uh, we've probably got let's have a look we could probably paint this front face here maybe we'll see there's no actual demarcation and we can maybe paint around this thing perhaps we'll see we'll see how it comes out but let's get on with this so what i'm going to do i'm not just going to go in straight in with black i'm actually going to go in with some where's it gone where's it gone with some that's not it with some mechanicus standard gray uh, when you're painting black things or dark things it's always much better to go in lighter and darken it up than it is to go in full whack at black because once you paint black there's not much more you can do so try and avoid just painting black black doesn't really exist in nature so we're going to take my I've got my base brush here and I'm just going to get this on here and I'm using the brush at this angle because it's easier to stay flat to the edge if you go in jabbing it you're going to get paint everywhere uh, but this way we can just keep paint paint per we can keep paint I went all kind of barrow then uh, barrow I went all hull we can keep the paint within the edges stay in the lines now it might not come out dark enough straight away so if it doesn't just go on and do a second coat but try and keep it as smooth as possible i thin this down with a tiny tiny bit of water uh, as always i am using my wet palette uh, i know at the start i showed a little palette little paper thing that's the games workshop sort of book palette book thing however when you're painting what you will find do it this way it might be easier when you're painting if you use a solid palette like the the games workshop one or a bit of you know a tile or a plate or something you'll find the paint dries out there really quickly and you're having to get more paint from the from the pot if you use a wet palette and i'll try and put a link here to my wet palette video however youtube have started doing it so when you say please make a thing appear here it just appears at the start of the video so if it's not there now just again go to my main youtube page and look at playlists and i think it's in the how to section how to make a wet palette it just means i'm keeping the paints moist and workable and they stay workable for a lot longer just need to go in there because i can't get in that corner Next up, we're going to go in with some Nuln oil. Let's get this out of the pot. And this is just to darken up what we've done, this grey, just so it looks a bit darker. So what we're going to do is simply put this over where we've just gone. Now, I don't want too much on the brush. I'm using a bigger brush to get a smoother finish, but I don't need a lot. I just need enough to cover that. So let's get that on that. It might take a couple of coats. One coat might not be enough. But I'll just see how it comes out and if it's not quite dark enough because I want it to look dark not quite black but dark so the purpose of this is sort of to go around the edges a bit but mostly to darken this area okay so while that shade is drying it's still got a few sticky bits we'll do the next thing which is the seat 
we want to make this a nice leathery color. So for that, we're going to use Rhinox hide. Yeah. So what we're going to do is quite simply paint it on. And again, I'm going to use my wet palette and I'm going to thin it ever so slightly, just a tiny bit of water. And I'm going to be brave and I'm going to use my Winsor & Newton Triple O Series 7 brush. Eee! That Mike Mountain got me. I think Mike Mountain got me this. Somebody got me this. Whoever it was, thank you so much. I've not had the nerve to try it yet. But my Artificer brush that I use for all my artificing is actually a bit fluffy now. So, yeah. So we need to uh, move on to the Series 7 and do the proper hardcore brushing. So, I'm just getting some paint on the brush. That's why I'm waffling. And all we need to do is start painting this in. Again, try and keep the brush not point down. You want to kind of use the side of the brush, really. That helps you get the flat surface initially. And you can see the paint's a little bit thinned. I don't want to put it on thick. When you're brush painting, the trick is that it's always better to use thin paint and lots of layers to build it up rather than thick paint straight away and have brush marking nonsense that you can't bear to look at. Uh, I'm doing it this way and that's going to kill the lighting on the camera. Oh, I also found out, um, apologies for the picture quality up to this point, I had to clean my lens. This may still be a bit overexposed, but it shouldn't be quite as grainy. I'm in trouble with this paint. I think I've got it too thin. Uh, uh, yes, it might not be as bit grainy now, hopefully. Okay, with the leather parts done, the first base coat for the leather, it's time to do some lead beltra. This is for the metallic parts. There's not very many of these, uh, only a few. We just need to get these colored in. We're just coloring really, that's all we're doing. So we're gonna do these tubes in this bit under here. I actually switched to a slightly bigger brush for the uh, seat because although this brush is designed for small details, the seat's a bit too big for the Series 7 triple O. So yeah, it was taking a while. So I decided to switch to this brush instead. So we've got these bits here. I might do this bit on the top. Uh, and then we've also got some little bits on the control console in the cockpit on the uh, upper hull. So we'll do that as well. Okay, with the metallic bits done, I painted these little bits down here and some parts on the dashboard with those bits done we need to put some shade on them and the leather so we're going to go back to our null oil and we're going to carefully wash over the those parts now we've got to be careful here you've got to try and be neat and not actually knock the camera which i've just done because i always do need to try and make sure we get this on the leather but not all over the other parts of the cockpit which are shaded with the, the agrax so I'm just kind of working it around the edge. I don't mind if it goes around the edge because that just gives it a shadow to separate it out from the rest of the cockpit. But I don't really want to get it all over the green areas. So it just pays to be a little bit neat here. There we go, that's quite good. Now this will give us a nice dark tone for our leather. And apologies if this is all in shadow. It's not exactly ideal. There's no real way for me to get these in the light and paint them. It's not for want of lighting, I've got tons of lighting. It's just everything's in the wrong place. Now I'm also gonna go over the lead belcher parts, which will mat them up, but we can come back and bring that back shortly. Okay, so that's all those washed. Now before we go ahead and do anything more to the leather, uh, what we need to do is start making this look a bit battered and scuffed. So we're going to use our good old favourite Necron compound. Now this is a dry paint, which means it's, as you can see, it's it's like a thick blob. It's not really, it's not paint like you know it. It's more just like pigment with a hint of carrier. So it's not just a pot of pigment. So get some on your brush. Da -da, where's the camera? There it is. Uh, then get most of it off on the brush. And then all we're going to do is we're going to dry brush. So we're going to try and pick out edges first of all, because we want, let's get some more off there, got a bit too much on. We want it to look like that's kind of worn through to the metal. Now I know when you've got this kind of zinc chromate 
colour. It doesn't really wear, it doesn't that easily wear down to the to the bare metal because it's kind of bare metal anyway. It's just a rust proof coating or corrosion proof coating is the zinc chromate. I can't, I think that's what I called it. I can't remember now. I'll have to look back and watch my old video. I oh, know. So I'm using a small, a small dry brush to try and avoid things like the the leather and stuff but it's not a big problem if I hit that brown but I did a little bit it's not a big problem so we'll just try and catch all these edges first of all now you won't really see these but as you move the model around it'll catch your eye you'll just pick out little shiny bits you can obviously dry brush with normal paints just gonna get some more because I'm running out uh, you can dry brush with normal paints it's just these dry paints are designed specifically for dry brushing so I'm just gonna get that off on the brush they are designed with dry brushing in mind so they just save you a bit of time save you wasting your other colors and we'll do more on these little areas where his hands would go so here and especially on these black bits this is where the necron compound will really show through on these black bits so if we just pick out the edge and then what i can do is i can just dab it just to get some little bits of patches of wear so go across it to get the edges and then you can dab to get more patchy effect I wish I could show you what I've done with the engine in the engine room bit in the passenger bit but I can't unfortunately I can't film it I'll show you later I'll do a still shot and stuff and I'll try and show you but you see there we've now got this wonderful kind of faded it's it's, it's not ripped it off completely but it's faded the paint away so it's just starting to show the bare metal so we'll assume this is some kind of panel that you remove, so we'll put a bit extra there. Okay, then what I'll do last of all is just go over these metal bits again. And this is just to pick out the edges. And just go over them fairly carelessly. You'll pick out the edges and you'll also add some scratchiness to the bit that's now dark with the wash on it. I keep forgetting where the camera is. Uh, and that just gives it that glint. So that's pretty good for the cockpit. I don't want to make it too well worn and torn. A bit more down there. And we'll do some on the floor. Not that you're ever going to see the floor, but I'll get a good good load of it down on the floor. Then you can get the brush in and wiggle it around it, however you want to do it. The beauty of these dry paints is they do give you a nice smooth finish, so you can build up a, if you wanted to build up a shiny, say, panel, you could dry brush it on, you know, layer after layer after layer, and you would eventually get a nice smooth metallic panel, which would be now I'll go and do similar things on the, the upper side of the cockpit. Uh, and then we'll sort the leather out. See, I've got some on the leather there. It doesn't matter. We'll sort that out. So I'll go and finish that. Okay, so that's now all done and looking nice and scruffy. Uh, next up, we're going to use some Gawthor Brown. We're going to actually just do some dry brushing on the leather of the seat to make it look a little less brand new. So I've got some Gawthor Brown on the brush. Just taking it off on a piece of tissue. I'm using a small dry brush for this. I don't want to get too chaotic with it. Make sure I've not got too much. And here we just need to be a bit careful. We just want to really hit these edges. Again, hit the edges first of all. And then kind of fade it into the middle a bit. A bit too much on that. Now this will just pick out the flat areas and make them lighter as you can see there. Go down here and do a bit down there. Okay, so that starts off there, so that's where we are. Next up we need to go with an even lighter brown colour or you can just add some white to the Gawthor brown or some yellow. So I'm going to let that dry for a second and we'll do the next bit. Okay, so we're not going to do what I just said. We're going to use some Talon sand uh, as a highlight colour. So I've got some on my wet palette. I'm just going to add a little bit of water just to make it flow properly. I'm going to go in with my Winsor & Newton Series 7. Yes, which is still terrifying me. And I'm just going to try and hit the edges like that. Maybe not that much. Just a little tiny bit. Just to get some wear and tear on there. Now, if you do like me and I did at the start there, go a bit do lally and a bit too far. Don't worry. Just give it a rub with your finger it will actually fade it it rub out the excess away and it will also fade it quite nicely so you want to get your brush about 45 degrees to the edge 
and just run it along. Now this is quite tricky because these are actually rounded edges. It's not that easy. So what I'll do is I'll just do that and then rub with my finger and it fades it. It kind of blends it in as long as you're quick because acrylics do dry fast. As long as you're quick, you can just go in and tweak it. Now I know you can't see this probably because it's, it's out of the light. Okay, so now we need to add some lights and switches. So first of all, we can do some lights. Now, I actually prefer white lights. I don't know, I mean, I'll do some colored lights, but I'll do quite a lot of these, especially on the black bits, I'll do them white because on black, white would stand out. So I'm gonna do some of these white. We'll do some reds and some yellows maybe. Uh, but it doesn't really matter what color you use. I'm not gonna go through a list of specific colors, but um, when you do them, try use a base paint. I'm gonna use ceramite white if you use a layer paint it's a bit translucent so it might take a couple of coats but with a base paint you should be good to go straight away so all you need to do get some on your palette get some on your brush it helps to be a little bit thinner than normal but not too thin just getting on now and all you do is touch it really get your smallest brush and just touch it to where you want it to go like that now, if you've got the paint thin enough, if you do it straight from the pot, this may not work. If you do it thin enough, with a little bit of water, not a massive one, just a tiny amount, then what will happen is the surface tension will keep the paint on the raised button, or whatever this thing is. You're doing it onto a raised surface, and it's one of the easiest things you can do to paint, because the surface tension will hold it in place. And I'll show this a bit better in a, in a bit when we do the display screen. But there we have some simple white lights. I'll do these square ones. Okay, for the last bit we're going to do today, change of angle. And I've just realised I've forgotten to do a bulb. Oh well, I'll better do that in a bit. I left one out, I left a white one out. <clears throat> yes anyway right last bit let's do some display screens we have a display screen here and here and little one here and there's one on the uh, couple in the cockpit as well in the the dashboard thing so we're going to do those now we're going to give them a kind of 1980s vdu look sort of green screen video i love this effect and i do it all the, all over the place because i love it so much for this we're not going to use a citadel paint we're going to use ammo by meg again crystal periscope green a meg 096 i love this color i'm going to give it a very good shake it's a clear color but the thing with the thing with ammo's paints they're clear paints it's probably very distracting while i'm doing that is they're kind of like jam i'm going to put it on here i'm going to be really uncouth put it on here they're kind of like jam now it just looks like a green blob but here's the thing Get some on your brush. Use a bigger brush than you normally would. You don't want a small brush for this. Get, get a goodly amount on your brush. And all you do is quite simply, steady your hand, quite simply touch it to the thing you want to put it on. Be very careful. And if you're lucky, the surface tension, like I said a moment ago, the surface tension will keep it on the thing you are painting. On the ray it works best on raised surfaces or just work in recessed surfaces as well but i don't know if it'll come on camera because of the lighting but you see how it stays in the middle and keeps away from the edge so it's thicker in the middle you get a darker green now when it dries it'll fade a little bit it won't look as extreme as that so let's do one on this side it's also the reason i've got this on a piece of blue tack so i can keep it upright now this one has got a silver uh, base so we'll see what this one looks like this will be a different color because my paint's over there now idiot because this has got silver underneath, it'll come out differently. So we'll do that as well. And if you just touch the brush, you're not moving the brush, you're not doing any kind of brush strokes. You're just letting the basically the liquid suck off the brush onto the thing you're painting. Beautiful. And now we'll do it again. And you can overload the brush at this point. It's not a problem. Because if you put a load on there, it'll just make a taller, a taller blob of paint. So I'll just put that there. You put a lot on it goes darker now i don't know if it'll come out on camera but on there you've now got a green square green rectangle 
but there's a white outline to it and if we're lucky when that dries it'll stay like that it may not be as intense but it'll keep that look and that is why i love these crystal paints now you can do this with things like tamiya clear colors uh, i think citadel have similar clear colors i know they have like um spirit stone red and things like that but they're a bit thicker i don't know if this would work you might have to thin them down i've never found a clear paint that does quite this this is unique i've not tried it with the other ammo paints we've got one last thing here it's this little recessed thing i'm going to put it in there i'm going to be careful and just touch it to the edge and it'll fill that in beautifully look at that that's delicious that's delightful now i actually put some white paint in there first i put some of that ceramite white in there first because it was a bit thin it went round the edge and gave it a little white halo now i've put this green in the middle you can see the white halo around the edge i'm quite pleased that, that was a complete happy accident that was totally a happy accident where's me where's me water that was completely a happy accident with a little white halo and that's the best thing about this when happy accidents happen i'm just cleaning my brush they are the most brilliant things now what i'll do while i've got me where's me where's me series seven where's me series oh i've put it down somewhere is that it there we go while i've got this white paint on my wet palette just touch this this bulb i say bulb i mean button nearly missed then there we go now you see there i've got white yellow and red and i've got white yellow and red but for some reason on this side they didn't come out as bright so we'll put some more yellow on there now for the yellow i used uriel yellow which is a layer paint but for a layer paint it's actually quite bright and bold so that's that and for the red I used evil sun scarlet which I'll just put some on there if you thin it down a little bit it comes out quite bright now the for some reason evil sun scarlet is a bit of a misbehavior it does like to whiz off onto the piece next to it like you've just seen it do there Zip. I don't know why it doesn't behave as well as the other paint so I'll need to touch that yellow one up again maybe put a little bit of null null down between the two buttons to separate them out but i'll sort that out later but yes so this is how i do my little computer screen type things i'll leave that for about half an hour to dry it'll dry shiny it's a glossy color but then once it's dried if you still if you want it to be even more glossy or if you need to matte varnish this and then you want to keep the gloss you can just go over with a little bit a tiny bit of either if you're using citadel's gloss varnish it's hard coat i'm going to use my pledge multi-surface wax and the same thing you just touch it to it i mean hard coat might not do because it's quite thick pledge multi-surface wax or pledge floor care finish will actually th do the same thing it will just glom onto the shape and won't flow everywhere so once this is done and all everything's dried and we've painted the space marine what i'll probably do the last thing i'll do is put a tot of gloss on these little screens there's also a couple of screens on the cockpit dashboard you can see here's the dashboard we've done we've got the metal colors and all the dry brushing uh, i did this bit and this bit the, the dark gray with the black wash to make them black this is the uh, iron breaker with the black null null wash this bit round here is iron breaker we've also got a little screen there is i've got have i got something i can prop that up with look at that perfect fit it's like a droid <laughs> Uh, this I want to be the green, so where's my, my green paints over here now? I'm not organised. Where's my big brush? Right, so that one, as I'm just handily able to keep it horizontal, I will touch it to it. And you can see there, the beautiful outline it's got. But I think that's going to do it for today. There's nothing more I need to do on the cockpit now, other than the pilot. I'll just bring him back in. Do -do -do other than the pilot i've still got lots to do on the interior of the uh people area um so i'll get that done i, I can't show i've used all the same techniques that i've used here i just can't show it to you because a the camera's too low down um but also because of the way it's like a clo almost closed box the lighting's terrible and you can't see it so uh, we'll just have to I'll, I'll explain it to you in the next i'll tell you what i've done but thank you so much for watching i do apologize for the picture quality throughout most of this episode until i realized i had to clean my lens for some reason over the last few weeks i've started having problems with exposure and white balance and i've tried i've got two different phones and they're all having a problem so it must be something with my lighting i don't know i've got you know plenty of lighting just for some reason i'm struggling at the moment so i don't know 
I don't know what it is, but hopefully it's all come out okay. But thank you so much for watching. Uh, do stay tuned for the next one. Uh, as always, this will go up online uh, early release for a week for Patreon patrons, and then it'll go up to everybody else a week after. Uh, so when the next one comes up again, it'll do the same. Uh, but I hope you're building along with this, because this is a really, really nice kit. I'm having a great deal of fun with this. I'm absolutely adoring it. I do love these Warhammer kits because they're so simple to build and they're an absolute joy to paint. And it also forced me to use my Series 7. And whoever got me this, I think it was Mike Mountain, but I can't know Mike Mountain. No, Mike Mountain got me some army painter brushes. This might have been Chris or Paul. Whoever got me this Series 7, I can't remember. I do apologise. I forget, it's been so long, but thank you so much because I've first time I've used this and it's absolute beauty for tiny details. I'm loving it. This is going to get a lot of use, especially on the pilot. <sighs> and there's me knocking the camera, which is my cue to go away. So, thank you so much for watching. Do take care of yourself. Stay tuned for the next one. Uh, until next time, go and get yourself one of these. Go and get yourself one. Either one of these or another Warhammer kit. Just go and do it. Go and do it. You know you want one. But until next time, take care of yourselves. Go make something awesome. Go be awesome. Adios, amoebas.